Hi, my name is Moritz Janisch. I'm a filmmaker from Frankfurt, Germany. And in this video, I will be talking about this brand new camera. It's the Fuji X-H1. This is Fuji's first real attempt to actually win over filmmakers from other manufacturers such as Sony or Panasonic, because this camera is pretty impressive when it comes to filmmaking. The Fujifilm X-H1 has a 24.3 megapixel APS-C sensor and can record video in Cinema 4K, Ultra HD and up to 120 frames per second in 1080p. The camera has two new picture profiles. Eterna Film Simulation is designed to give the footage a filmic look without having to do any color correction. The picture's style looks good overall, but when accidentally underexposing the image, the blacks can be crushed. I recommend turning down the shadows and also the sharpness to avoid aliasing or moiré. The second picture profile is more suitable if you want to be able to color grade the footage in post. One of the features I personally have been looking forward the most is definitely recording F-Log internally. In case you're asking yourself what the F is F-Log, well it's Fuji's flat picture profile which means you can actually grade the footage much better because on previous cameras Fuji didn't include a proper log picture profile. And the cool thing is also that you can actually record 4K at 200 Mbps which is pretty high. For example, the Sony A7S II can only record at 100 Mbps. So this is pretty cool when it comes to grading the footage. Fujifilm also provides a lot to give the F-Log footage a basic color correction, but even without that I didn't have any troubles grading the footage, even though it's only recording in 8-bit and not 10-bit internally. It's definitely an advantage to have the ability to record 4K not only at 100 but at 200 Mbps to make sure there is no banding or noise visible. For quick documentary shoots I will probably use Eterna as a picture profile, but for most commercial productions F-Log seems to be a better and safer choice to control the image in post. The X-H1 can shoot up to 30 frames per second in Ultra HD and 24 frames per second in Cinema 4K, which is 17x9 instead of the common 16x9. While the previous camera from Fuji, the X-T2, could only shoot 60 frames per second in 1080p to create a slow motion effect, the X-H1 can do 120 frames. Being able to shoot 120 frames per second in 1080p is definitely one of the things I also enjoy with this camera. Even though it's not perfect, you can still see some moiré and aliasing, and it's only in full HD, but I think it's good that they included that. So huge thumbs up from me, even though it's not perfect, but overall it's pretty usable. Um, especially when shooting F-Log, you can grade the footage and it looks pretty cool. Fuji has really focused on making the X-H1 a great video camera. And in case you ask yourself now, well, why is it much better than the X-T2? Well, for example, it has IBIS, which means it's internal image stabilization. That means you can use a prime lens that doesn't have any image stabilization and the camera will automatically stabilize it, which means the other day, for example, I went out with an 85 mm prime lens, which is obviously a tele lens. So usually it has to have image stabilization. Otherwise, when you shoot video, it's just gonna be jittery and jerky. But thanks to the IBIS, I got some very nice, stable shots. The internal image stabilization works really well and it makes filming handheld possible with lenses that I would have only used on a tripod before and never handheld. When using Fuji X lenses that already have optical image stabilization, the IBIS will stabilize it even more, which is another big advantage. Even though it's not a full-frame camera, the high ISO performance is very impressive. 
The footage still looks clean at ISO 6400 and image noise only becomes very visible above ISO 12800. That means it's not an issue to shoot F-Log in dark surroundings and low light and grade the footage without damaging the image visibly or making unwanted noise appear. The camera has a touchscreen that is very responsive, but it's only available when filming and taking pictures, but in the main menu the joystick and other buttons on the back have to be used to navigate and to change settings. The 3 inch LCD monitor on the back can be flipped out and moved to the right side. On top of the camera's body is a dial for shutter and ISO, as well as a new screen that shows a few settings like white balance, recording mode picture profile and how many photos or minutes of video still remain. Even when the camera is turned off, the battery info and the available space on the SD card is shown. The XH1 has space for two SD cards. On the left side are different inputs such as HDMI, USB and a 3.5mm microphone input. Compared to the older X-T2, the X-H1 appears to be much bigger, which is also caused by the new shaped grip. Even though the camera looks quite big, especially with the battery grip attached, it doesn't feel very heavy. In case you are wondering why am I using a big battery grip, well the truth is I want the camera to look cool, but the real reason is I need it, because if I want to record more than 15 minutes in one take, it's only possible with this battery grip. But the bigger thing is, you also need the battery grip if you want to listen to your audio, because the camera itself doesn't have a headphone jack. The battery grip has a 3.5mm input, which means you can monitor your audio with headphones, but without the headphone jack, you can only see the levels on the display on the back of the camera, but you cannot actually listen to the audio. For photographers, of course, that doesn't matter at all, but let's be honest, Fuji focused on making this rather a film camera than a photo camera, so it's kind of weird that they didn't include the headphone jack in the body and that there's still a limit of 30 minutes recording and without the battery grip of 15 minutes. I like using cinema lenses to get a nice smooth focus pull, but sometimes it's good to have the ability to use autofocus. The X-H1 has continuous autofocus in video mode as well as touch focus, both available in HD and 4K, which means you can tap on an area of the screen and the camera will pull focus automatically. Another AF mode is face detection to track faces which can be useful when people are moving or walking around. For me it's still too early to really judge the face detection and the tracking mode because there are different options and settings that need to be fine tuned and I still got some more testing to do. The good thing about the face detection though is that you can actually set the tracking sensitivity and the speed as well which means how fast should the focus move. The Fujifilm X-H1 is clearly designed for video professionals and filmmakers, which becomes clear when looking at little settings like the ability to adjust the shutter speed more precise to for example 1 48th of a second instead of 1 50th of a second. This comes in handy when filming in cinema 4K at 24 frames per second. Other useful settings for filmmakers include focus peaking, the ability to check focus during recording, timecode and the audio levels being displayed in decibel. I am glad to see Fuji breaking into the video market with a camera that is comparable to the Sony A7 series and the Panasonic GH5. It's not perfect, but it's definitely a big step in the right direction. 
I hope you enjoyed this little video review of the Fujifilm X-H1. It's really like an improved version of the X-T2 for filmmakers, which is a camera I have been using for almost a year now on a daily basis, mostly for commercial work, but also for YouTube content. And this is really like an improved version for filmmakers, especially because it can shoot F-Log, because it has the 120 frames per second, and because it has IBIS internal image stabilization. I get to get back in now because it's getting too rainy. That's it and I'll see you next time. Bye.